Okay, morning everyone. This is going to be our final video on circles and in this video we're going to look at intersecting circles. So we have three different scenarios and we'll go through a question on each one just to make sure that we understand it fully. So first of all, we're going to look at circles touching externally. Now as a quick diagram, what we're looking at here is two circles that have a single point of intersection. We have what's called a common tangent. And the reason, the way we know that the circles touch externally is the difference between their centers is equal to the sum of the radii. So when we're proving the two circles touch externally, this is what we're looking to prove here. In terms of finding the equation of the common tangent, there's two methods that we can use. Um, I'll go through those in a second. So first of all, we're going to look at two circles here. So we're going to look at circle one which has an equation x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. And we're going to look at circle 2, which has the equation x squared plus y squared minus 14x minus 16y plus 77 equals 0. So these are our two equations of our circles. So when we're finding out whether they touch internally or externally, what we need to do first of all is find their center and their radius. So we use that using the minus g minus f and the radius is the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. So the center of circle one here is going to be the coordinates one zero and the radius is the square root of one squared plus zero squared minus minus 15 which gives us a radius of four. Then we look at the center of circle two which is 7, 8, and radius square root of 7 squared plus a squared minus 77, which gives us a radius of 6. That's the first thing we need to do in terms of finding information about our circles. The next thing that we do is we look at the distance from center 1 to center 2. So we're looking at the distance from this point to this point here. So it's the square root of x2 minus x1. So 7 minus 1 to be squared plus 8 minus 0 to be squared. And that gives us 6 squared plus 8 squared, which is a rate, uh, distance of 10. If we look at r1 plus r2, that's 4 plus 6, which also gives us 10. So therefore, circle 1 and circle 2 will touch externally. So we have looking at here. The distance between their centers is equal to the sum of their radii. So the next thing we need to look at is finding the equation of this common tangent. Now we know that to find the equation of a tangent, we need two things. We need the slope of the line and we need a point on the line. Okay, so looking at our information that we have so far, I'll just fill it into the diagram. We have center one, which is the point one zero. We have center two, which is the point seven eight. We know that they touch externally, and this is radius 4, and this is radius 6. So what we can do here to find the point of contact, point P, we can use the point dividing a line segment in a given, given ratio formula, or we can use translations, either or. I'm going to use translations here because it's a little bit quicker. So we're looking at, in terms of an internal division, the point 1, 0 maps onto the point x, y with a translation of 4, which maps onto the point 7, 8 with a translation of 6. So the overall translation is a translation of 10. So 1 to 7 is an increase of 6, which represents 10 units or 10 steps. So therefore, one step is equal to 0 0.6. We're moving forwards four steps, so four times by 0 0.6 is 2.4, which means that our x coordinate is 3.4. We do the same thing with the y coordinate. We're going from 0 to 8, which is an increase of 10 steps, so therefore one step is 0 0.8. And Again, we're increasing four steps from our start point here. So zero plus four times 0 0.8 gives us a Y coordinate of 3.2. So now we have the coordinates of point P, which is the coordinate 3.4 comma 3.2. That's the first thing we need. The second thing we need is the slope of the line. Now, because we know that this is a common tangent, a tangent is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. So what we need to do is find the slope of the line between the centers, then find the perpendicular slope, and that will be the slope of our tangent. So if we look at the slope from center one to center two, first of all, 
we're looking at y2 minus y1, which is 8 minus 0, over x2 minus x1, 7 minus 1. So that gives us a slope of 4 over 3. Because we're looking for the perpendicular slope, the slope of our tangent is going to be minus 3 over 4. The last thing we need to do is find the equation of the line. So using the formula, y minus y1 equals m by x minus x1. We input our information into the formula, y minus 3.2 equals minus 3 over 4 times by x minus 3.4. Multiply and cross by 4. I'm just going to come up here again because I've run out of space. So I'm multiplying across by 4 here, 4y minus 3.2 by 4 is minus 12.8 equals minus 3x and minus 3 by minus 3.4 is plus 10.2. And then bringing everything to one side, we have 3x plus 4y and minus 12.8 uh, minus 10.2 is minus 23 is equal to 0. So that's one method of finding the common tangent. Now, we actually have a bit of a shortcut method in terms of finding the common tangent as well. So wherever you're asked to find the equation of a common tangent or a common chord of two circles, we can actually use the formula S1 minus S2 is equal to zero. Equation of circle one minus the equation of circle two equals zero. So if we look at it again, our equation of circle one was x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 15 is equal uh, minus 15 equals zero we're going to subtract from that x squared plus y squared minus 14x minus 16y plus 77 and let it equal to zero all right so obviously the minus here will change the sign of everything inside the bracket. So x squared minus x squared is 0. y squared minus y squared is 0. We have minus 2x plus 14x, which gives us 12x. We have minus minus 16y, which is plus 16y. And we have minus 15 and minus 77, which gives us minus 92 is equal to 0. We can divide across by 4 to simplify the equation, which leaves us 3x plus 4y minus 23 is equal to zero. So as you can see, a lot less work involved in this method and it is fully valid for any question. If you are asked to find the, the, the point in, in the diagram, however, you will need, so if we're asked to find this, uh, sorry, that's not the equation that we're, the circles that we're looking at, we're looking at external circles. So if we're asked to find this point of contact, you will have to go about it using the first method. So looking at the point dividing the line segment in the given ratio. So that's type one, and that's looking at interse intersecting circles that touch externally. Now we're going to look at circles touching internally. So internally means that if we're looking at a quick diagram, we have a bigger circle, we have a smaller circle. Again, we'll have a single point of contact. We'll have center one, center two, and this time, and again, common tangent. And this time, the difference, the distance between the centers is going to be the difference between the radii. Now we always have to make sure and subtract the smaller radius from the bigger radius. So if the bigger circle is circle one, then you do radius one minus radius two. If the bigger circle is rad is circle two, then you do radius two minus radius one. So if we look at an example again, we're going to look at circle one with the equation x squared plus y squared plus four x minus six y plus 12 is equal to zero. And circle two, with the equation x squared plus y squared minus 12x plus 6y minus 76 is equal to zero. So again, first thing we do is find the centers of both and the radius of both. So center one is going to be the point minus two, three, and we have a radius of the square root of two squared plus three squared minus 12, which gives us a radius of one. Center out two, is going to be 6 minus 3 and square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared minus uh, minus 76 that gives us a radius of 11. 
So again, we get the distance between the centers. So the distance from center one to center two, the square root of x2 minus x1, so that's 6 minus minus 8, uh, minus minus 2, so that's plus 2 squared, plus minus 3 minus 3 squared, and that gives us a distance of 10. 8 squared plus 6 squared is 10. All right, and then we are looking at the difference between the centers. Now, because radius 2 is bigger than radius 1, we do radius 2 minus radius 1, which is 11 minus 1, which is, again, 10. So because the distance between the two centers is equal to the difference between the radii, the two circles will touch internally. We can use the same method then for finding the equation of the common tangent, S1 minus S2 is equal to zero and simplify by dividing across. So if we're looking at finding the equation there, S1 minus S2 is going to be x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y plus 12. I'm going to subtract from that x squared plus y squared minus 12x plus 6y minus 76, and let it equal to 0. So again, the x squared will, and y squared will cancel each other out. We have 4x plus 12x, which is 16x. We have minus 6y minus 6y, which is minus 12y. We have 12 plus 76, which is 88. And we can divide across by 4, which leaves us with the equation 4x minus 3y plus 22 is equal to zero. And if you went about it the other method using your point of contact and uh, the slope of the uh, the slope of the tangent, you would end up with the same equation. All right. 